Welcome back to Construct Freak. In last week's video, we looked at creating a really, really simple RTS game. So if I just start it up now, I've got my free troops here that I'm able to click on and I'm able to set them a path. Now, where possible, they'll try and avoid the water unless the water is favorable as the slightly quicker path. And they'll move around these big mountains that we've got here. So if you want to learn how to create this and have access to this map to start you off with, I'll put a link in the description for the first part. But now we want our enemies to actually shoot back, to wander around the level, and to be a part of this sort of small game. So let's get started. First thing we want to do is get our enemies to have a bit of a wander around. So the easiest way to do this is right click, edit behaviors, and we're going to give them the pathfinding behavior as well. And we'll just hit the X on that. On our event sheets, we're going to add a global variable. So just right click, add global variable, and this is going to be called wander range. And this is how far they can wander. And there's lots of different ways of doing wandering. So we can have it so they can wander from a fixed starting location. We're going to let them wander as much as they want around the map but we're going to let them only move a maximum of 20 places each time. So I'm just going to put that global variable at the top there. So what we're going to do is we're going to allow them to move every second. Like so. And what we're going to do is get our troop enemies to find a path. And that path is going to be random. But we don't want to go randomly anywhere. We want them to go somewhere close by. So we're going to take the troop enemy dot x and we're going to minus the wander range that's going to be our first number our second number is going to also be the troop enemy and this time plus wander range so we're taking current x location oh, let's make sure that's dot x we're taking this current x position and we're taking 20 away from it and adding 20 to it and then getting a random number between those two so we're essentially getting a circle once we add the Y on as well, so let's do that now, around where that enemy can go. And that's every second it's looking at a little circle range around him where we can go. If we want to increase this range, we just change that number at the top. Before we see this in action, what we need to do is actually check if they found a path. So we can just scroll down and say on path found. Then we want them to move on that path. Now we can test it. So you'll see they'll start moving around and they'll just have a little bit of a wander around the area. Nothing too special and obviously can look a bit strange at times. But it's a really, really nice just for a very basic AI, just so they have a bit more character to them. Final thing we want to add to them is just add a new behavior. And we just want to use a bound to layout. And this just means they can't wander off the screen. Now with that set up, what we want to do is actually start adding a shooting mechanic for both our player and the enemies. So next thing we want to add is some sort of shooting mechanic. So we're going to right click, insert a new object, and we're going to get a sprite. We're going to call this bullet. Click anywhere to create the bullet. And I just like using sort of a gold color with a circle and start the circle and make it go just slightly off the screen and then just crop it down. And this creates a really, really simple looking bullet without too much time. Obviously, you can spend a lot more time on yours. Once you've got your bullet, we're going to resize it. So what I like to do is put it next to the enemy or the player. I then zoom right in, and then I can resize it to the size that it thinks. I can then resize it to a size that makes sense for our object. So if I scroll down, and I'm gonna hold Shift, I'm just gonna line that up with the barrel of the gun. And that's about right. Once I've got that and I'm happy with it, I'm just going to put it at the top of the screen so it's off the screen. And then I can add the bullet behavior to it. So edit behaviors, add new behavior, and we want bullet. With that done, we need to actually clone this now, rename this, and this is gonna be enemy bullet. Now we can have this be just one bullet that we spawn for both, but it's easy actually if we have two separate ones. So I'm going to have a separate bullet there as well. So that's all set up. We can zoom out again. And before we're able to start shooting bullets, we need to lay down some rules of when we should shoot. And the easiest way to do this is when we have line of sight. So we're going to add new behavior to both our player and the enemy. And we've got the line of sight behavior. 
Same for our troops, just edit behaviors, add a new one, and line of sight. And with both of these, if we click on our troop friendlies first, and we scroll down, we've got obstacles is solid, which means it can't see through solid objects such as our mountain, and its range is 10,000, which is the whole map. So I recommend putting this right down to about 300. And same for our troop enemies, we'll put this down to the same as well, like so. If you had different classes like sniper classes, you might want them to have a bigger range, or shotgun classes might have a smaller range. That's stuff you can adjust and play around with. Now we need to implement this into our code. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if our troop friendly has line of sight of an object. And we're checking for our troop enemy. If they do, we want them to shoot. We don't want to shoot all the time, so we're going to add another condition. And we're going to check for every second. This means we can shoot every second when we can see the enemy. So we can now say our troop friendly dot spawn another object. And we're going to select our bullets. We're then going to also take our troop friendly and set angle towards position. And this is going to take our troop enemy. We're going to take the X and Y of this. And this just means we're going to actually face towards the enemy. And then we're also going to take our bullet. And we're also going to set angle towards our enemy as well. So when the bullet's created, it will face the enemy and where the enemy currently is. Like so. So that's now all set up. So now when we've got line of sight of the enemy, we'll start shooting. We can then just do pretty much the same thing again to get this working for the enemy. So let's take our enemy and check if it has line of sight over our troop friendly. Again, we'll make it so it can only shoot every second. Like so. And then we'll take our enemy and set its angle towards troop friendly. Oh, troop friendly dot X and troop friendly dot Y. So it's now facing our allies. We also need to get it to spawn a bullet. So we're going to scroll down. And this time it's going to spawn the enemy bullet. And I'm going to just swap those around. So it's just the same as the one we've got above. And then we're going to finally take the enemy bullet and set angle towards troop friendly dot X and troop friendly dot Y. And now we can start another test. So nothing's happened at the moment. Let's take a couple of our troops and move them slightly closer. And you'll see they're beginning to shoot each other now. Now what's happening is our troops are shooting at different people. Now we want to not necessarily specify which one, but we want it to be a bit more accurate. And we want to actually shoot whoever's the closest. So again, this is not true to proper RTS. With RTS, you might want to select exactly who you're shooting at. We're just gonna go for the closest for now. So on both of these, we'll start with this one first. We're gonna add another condition. And this is gonna be our troop enemy. And we've got this option down near the bottom called pick nearest and furthest. So we want to pick nearest to troop friendly dot x and troop friendly dot y. This means all of our troops will check who is the closest enemy to them and they'll shoot at them. We can do the same for our troop enemies. So this time they're looking at the troop friendlies. And again, we're looking at pick nearest or furthest and we want to pick the nearest to troop enemy dot x and troop enemy dot y. So now we run this, it will always try and aim for the one that's closest to that troop. So now that's set up, we can now get the bullets working to actually hit and cause damage. So on our right hand side, we're going to take our troop enemy and edit the instance variables. We're going to add a new one called health. And by default, we're going to set this to 10. We also need to do the same for our troop friendlies. So edit instance variables, add a new one called health. And again, I'm going to set this to 10. Now, if these set up, if we were to go to our layout, we can click on individual troops and we can adjust the health. So I can say this guy is going to have 15 health 
I might want to say this enemy down here has only got five health. So we can adjust these for each particular enemy or troop on the battlefield. So back to our event sheet, we're going to add a condition to say if troop friendly is overlapping another object and this is going to be enemy bullet. So if our troops been hit by a bullet, then what we're going to do is take our troop friendly and we're going to scroll down and we're going to subtract one from its health. We also need to take that bullet and destroy it. This just means it can't pass through and deal damage to all the other enemies and keep going forever. We can do the same now for our troop enemy. So we'll see if it's overlapping just the regular bullet, so our friendly bullet. And again, we're going to take our troop enemy, scroll down, and then subtract from health by one. And then we're going to take our friendly bullet and destroy it. And again, this just means it can't pierce through and damage multiple enemies at the same time. Our final bit of code that we need today then is to check if our enemies or players are dead. So we'll start with our troop friendly, scroll down, compare instance variable, so health is equal to zero. And then if that's the case, we're gonna take our troop friendly and we're gonna scroll down and destroy it. And then the same for our troop enemy. Scroll down, compare instance variable. If health is equal to zero, we can take our troop enemy and then destroy as well. And that's it, we're all set up. So if we play this now, let's see if I can take out all the enemies on the screen. I'm gonna take these two guys, I'm gonna position them here. I'm gonna have this guy move around for a flank. That's it, so all taken down, so let's move them now. And we'll start shooting this guy. And let's go for this next guy. And then finally this last one over here. Now you'll see our only issue now is that our enemies keep moving around. So all we can do to fix this is just add a new condition here on line 13 and just say if troop enemy has line of sight of object and player hit done and then we can just invert that and this just means now as soon as our enemy sees our player it will stop trying to move which means it'll be more accurate with its bullets so i hope you've enjoyed this sort of mini two-part series please let me know what other mechanics from other games you'd like to see recreated in construct and i'll see you in the next video